Good morning, good day, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Greetings. On behalf of FIDIC, I would like to welcome everyone at the FIDIC Future Symposium, event part of the FIDIC Online Business Weeks. My name is Cosmin Tovoljan, and I am the chair of the FIDIC Future Leaders Committee. I would like to share my greetings to the FIDIC CEO, Nelson Ogunshakin, to FIDIC President, William Howard, and to FIDIC Board Member in charge of the Future Leaders, Mr. Mark Pechlik, and also to all my uh, future leaders fellow speakers from today, which I will introduce them a little bit uh, later. The program for today is divided into two sections. So the, far, the first part is going to take for one hour where we are going to have our uh, future leaders symposium. We will have then a 10 minutes comfort break. And afterwards we are going to have a 40 minutes uh, presentations from uh, the Future Leaders Management Certificate Programs, trainers. Uh, we are calling this program to be the MBA of FIDIC. The theme for our symposium is the new normal in the world of infrastructures and consulting engineering. As all we know, the world changed a lot during uh, all this mass because of COVID-19. In, but we can say that FIDIC uh, organized it very well, so we responded very fast. Having organized only in 10 weeks, 21 events, and I mean 18 FIDIC COVID-19 webinars, plus three FIDIC Future Leaders webinars, which attracted more than 9,000 participants from 150 countries across all the globe to listen to international lineup of experts speaking from all the engineering, construction, and in infrastructure industry. Also, our committee, the FIDIC Future Leaders Committee, was very, very active during this year. We have provided a lot of reports on uh, COVID-19, and also we have uh, provided an e-booklet that is going to be published very soon on the FIDIC website, with a lot of papers all over the world, considering the topic of our symposium. Uh, not to lose time anymore, I would like to invite uh, to the floor Mr. Nelson Ogushankin to the virtual Zoom floor, let's say, who to give us a welcome message for our symposium. Nelson, please. Cosme, thank you very much for that warm welcome. Thank you very much to the rest of the uh, uh, Future Leaders uh, uh, Program and Leadership. I'm extremely delighted uh, to speak on behalf of the FIDIC Secretariat in Geneva and to welcome everybody from wherever you are around the world. I see we currently have 108 people. I'm told we're expecting possibly 200 over, which means to me quite a lot. Um, I am actually delighted to join you. I will not take too much of your time. Uh, we have an exciting program ahead. And as Cosme said, you know, we did not intend to do anything uh, with the COVID, but then with experience of the webinar, we decided we should put this program on. I'm also delighted that Bill Howard, our president, uh, may be able to join us sometime later today, either at the beginning of this to support the team or towards the end of the particular issue. Um, we've got a few updates uh, from Felix, and I just thought I should share that with you very briefly. Um, perhaps next slide, if we are able to get that, that would be extremely helpful. Um, looking through what Felix has been up to, Cosme alluded to some of the things we've been doing this year. I think for me, the biggest one is setting the roadmap for the future. What you'll be hearing for the future leaders today is the challenges that the industry face and how they intend to tackle that. We have just launched a new strategic plan and this will continue to be in the public domain. We done the COVID-19, wherever you are, everybody is dealing with the challenges. As Cosme said at the beginning, we are looking to beef up our credentialing and qualifying people and this future leaders program, which we've just relaunched again, uh, would be very useful as part of that credentialing. Yes, Cosme talked about what we did on the COVID-19, uh, and the numbers and the statistics are fairly robust and there, and I'm pleased that we were able to support the industry during that period. More important, our committees have been restrengthened and restructured, and I'm believing that we now have quite a number of the future leaders embedded within our committees, in our contract committee, in our you know, diversity and inclusion, sustainability group, so I'm really pleased that we're beginning to see more and more of future leaders taking a key role in our future activities. All the stuff that we've done over the last 12 months are very much well on the screen. I'm sure that when this particular program is available, uh, the recording will be available for people to see. So strategic plan, the webinar, 
the credentialing, the new website, CEO update and annual report. When you have the time to go through the annual report, you will see that you know, a lot of the activities being done uh, by future leaders today. I'm really, really pleased and glad of the performance. And I will want to mention one or two particular people. Michelle done a great job this year on the diversity and inclusion. Cost me, you wear so many hats, you know, leading the future leaders, but at the same time joining us in our board. Yes, you are not a board member, but you make some real valuable contribution to that. And without further ado, if the president is here, I will invite him to say a few words. If he's not, then we've got Mark Palin, who will also say a few words. I take it that Bill I'm is here. here. He's here. Bill is here. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I, 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 I am here. Bill, and you I know. Yes. I love the future leaders meetings because uh, you, you folks are just so good at cramming so much material into such a short period of time. Uh, and once again, if I look at the agenda and what we have planned today, uh, it's uh, consistent with your, with your tremendous effort. Uh, Nelson mentioned how many of you are starting to get involved with our committees and task groups, which is really uh, so essential to, <clears throat> to FIDIC's future. Um, and it's this program, the Futures Leader Program, that helps us uh, look to the future uh, for FedEx with committees, task groups, and, and on the, the board and advisory uh, uh, you know, roles and, and all of that kind of thing. This, this, org this organization uh, really depends on input from all sorts of stakeholders, uh, not the least of which are the future leaders. Uh, you're going to inherit a, a very interesting world that you probably have inherited in a lot of ways. And uh, I always get energized from participating uh, with the future leaders. So with that, uh, back to, I think, Nelson or maybe Cosman. I, I think actually is Mark Pelin. Oh, Mark, I'm sorry. Over. Yes, Go ahead. Mark, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Mark. Okay, yeah, thank you very much, uh, uh, Nelson, and uh, also Cosmin uh, for, for this uh, great event. I'm, um, I'm liaised to the FIDIC future leaders on behalf of the FIDIC board and I'm impressed by the work that has been done, especially in this difficult time because the COVID, let's say, in, with the interaction that you have with your, with your back, with, your, with, with the background of all the member associations and, and your members of the, of the future leaders is quite difficult in these times. However, you manage that and you really came up in the spirit of time, even with, let's say, uh, connecting to all the... Um, the future leaders around the globe to see what is happening, how we can help and support the, uh, uh, the consulting engineering industry with, with what we learned during the COVID, how we can work together. And I think the, uh, the current symposium is a, is a yeah, call it a cherry on the pie to demonstrate that to everyone. And also let's say um, the fourth booklet and explaining with a few presentation, what is the best practice from the future leaders uh, point of view. So that's excellent. And I think, uh, yeah, it, it's a, a great diversity with 20, 22 people all from all around the globe. Uh, of course, with, a, with also a, an age, uh, an age uh, diversity up to 40 years, uh, uh, so to say. But, um, but it's really strong. And I think young people need a lot of room. And I think there's a lot of space for the future leaders also in future because there's many, many young, innovative and creative people, young people, working in our member firms. And the larger firms may have organized themselves, also member associations may have organized, also have their future leaders organization. So tapping into them is, is one of the key objectives, but also reaching out to, uh, to young, inspiring people and inspiring people in, in smaller firms and medium-sized firms. Um, I will hand back to you, uh, Cosmin, but before I do that, I would like to thank you for your, for your leadership because you're handing over uh, to Adam uh, soon, but still you're, uh, you're chairing the, the Future Leaders uh, Group. I would like to thank you for your leadership. Uh, you've demonstrated to be very active, proactive and having a good ambition, but being modest, modest as well at the same time. And I think that's a good demonstration of, of leadership. And you were very active also in the board, uh, board meetings where you attended also this year in the online, uh, online meetings we had. You're very active towards your, uh, your, your, towards your group. And also, uh, yeah, I think it, uh, it's demonstrated by the fact that uh, so many, so many interested young people from around the world would like to join the future leaders. So all the best for the symposium and thanks again for your leadership, Cosmin, handing back to you. 
Thank you very much, Mark, for your uh, very nice words. Thank you very much, Nelson and, uh, and Bill, for your support uh, during all these years for the TDIC Future Leaders uh, Committee. And uh, I'm 100% sure, as I was saying in the meeting before, that uh, we are going to, to have a very good uh, chair because Adam is going to be the next chair in, uh, from the next GAM. And uh, we already discussed our transition in order to have a fast transition and for the feeding future leaders to go forward. This being said, maybe Barbara, you can put to the slides. Uh, I would like to tell you that uh, feeding uh, future leaders symposium started as an idea five years ago at the International Feeding Conference from Dubai in 2015. At that time, it was only one idea, but in one year, we succeeded in making uh, um, a real symposium. So this is how from 2016 till now, we are now at the fourth edition, but this is an online edition as, uh, um, as you see, because we are in the new normal and we are seeing what is happening now all over the world. Barbara, maybe you can put the slides on the, on the screen, please. No, before this. Should be, a, should be a very nice slide with some very nice pictures from our events. That one. I put this slide when I did the, the presentation for, for this symposium because uh, there are pictures from uh, the conferences and events that we had uh, last year. And uh, to be honest, when I talk to, to all the committee members, we miss that moment when we, uh, we met each other and we discussed each other. It, it was a little bit more energetical, let's say. We had a little bit more energy to, to provide for the future. And we had another opportunities to discuss. Next slide, please. As uh, I'm always doing in the presentations as the chair, I'm trying to, to define always in the beginning, what is the Future Leaders Committee? The FIDIC Future Leaders Committee is a working committee. It's appointed by the FIDIC board. As you have seen, we are very close to the FIDIC board, to the FIDIC CEO, to the FIDIC president. And that committee was formed to develop communication and networking opportunities for all the future leaders involved in the FIDI community. This is for us very important. We have uh, prepared in, uh, after the FIDI COVID uh, webinars, we have prepared uh, free webinars, special webinars, FIDI future leaders webinars, where we try to connect to all AMAs all over the world, to try to help them to develop the, um, the network of the future leaders, because uh, we really believe inside our com community and inside our group, that we can really spread the FIDIC word all over the world. Next slide, please. But this year, what happened was uh, for all of us something totally unexpected. If this coronavirus started uh, in the beginning, in December, if I remember correctly, as a health pandemic, step by step, it became something that is uh, creating long lasting changes that will clearly affect the way we live and we work. Like in, a, in all the other industries, also the engineering and the construction sector has also been very seriously impacted. And engineers all over the world are uh, wondering how this pandemic is going to change the way that they are. It is clear for all of us that in the moment, I think we do not fully comprehend what is going to happen and what is going to be the next step. I believe that COVID-19 is a pandemic is like a stress for society and for organizations. And the challenge is not only to fix what was broken, but we will imagine also the new normal. Next slide, next slide, please. In uh, May this year, our committee decided to have uh, this symposium, the first online symposium. And the theme for it was chosen uh, to be infrastructure development and consulting engineering in the new normal. Why this? Because we realized after discussing between us that everything is going to change in the industry and us as future leaders, we have to be prepared and to deliver our message to the world. 
Step by step, we created the call for papers uh, with the beginning of May. Then um, we received papers all over the world. Papers that are going to be published in, uh, in uh, e-booklet for this year. This uh, e-booklet is going to be uh, put on the FIDIC website and especially on uh, our uh, link. You, can, you have the link on the, on the, um, on the screen. And what did you, we realize? After reading, our committee has a special committee which is uh, analyzing all the papers. We realize that there are a lot of questions that our speakers and our, uh, um, the ones that wrote the papers are making. And I would say that uh, the, um, some of the, of the questions, how do we react and what decisions do we take that are going to shape our industry? how the future of our companies are going to be normal again. How will the pandemic is going to change our industry? Could this be the time to, to rethink of different certain partnerships? What lessons can we learn from other industries? So we are going to have next uh, three speakers, three speakers which were selected from all the papers sent to our committee. These three speakers, are going to tell you more about how they think that infrastructure development and consulting engineering is looking in the new normal. Our first speaker is going to be Rodrigo Juarez. Rodrigo is a member of the FIDIC Future Leaders Committee and uh, a very active member. And please, Rodrigo, you are invited to speak. Um, thank you very much, Kasmin, for, for these um introduction it's very uh, it's always a pleasure to be here supporting FIDIC and the and the FIDIC future leaders committee so I would like to talk about uh, one of uh, the articles that I contributed to that it was um, social distancing in the construction side so um, it is very difficult to assume what the new normal will look like because not only in the infrastructure sector but also the wider consultancy and engineering sector that has been affected. So exploring the current situation from the perspective of the built environment, COVID-19 has definitely made the industry reconsider many of the work patterns and practices that we used to adhere to. It has made us think about great areas of opportunity, but also about many of the challenges we are yet to face. It is really curious how um, regular activities that we consider business as usual have now been transformed. In many cases, um, normal things in our daily activities have been substituted or replaced and activities such as buying a coffee are being now minimized or restricted. So when you consider and amplify the effect into wider sectors, it is clear that nor normal working patterns will continue to be affected. But it's important to consider that the question for the future remains, is, is this going to be for the better or for the worst? So, I remember not many years ago in a project where we used to go uh, to the construction site every day. Uh, it was outside of the city, so there were not many places to go and gather around or to buy something. So we used to go to this cafeteria where uh, we all used to have lunch, breakfast, and our meals. And we would gather over there and, and sit around. And I remember the huge queues that would form and everyone was waiting to buy something to get a table or to enjoy their meal. So this picture is, is for example, something that I, I would see that you could see in, in many places that uh, around 100 people were, would arrive simultaneously in the cafeteria and, and the area would be really crowded. But it was a, a, a good place for everyone to gather around, to have some um, rest and to talk about each other, what everyone was doing. So what COVID-19 has brought us, uh, can you please go to the next slide, Barbara, please? Um, what COVID-19 has brought us is, is a disruption in these normal and common activities that we undertake. For example, times have changed between catching up with work colleagues, breaks, lunch. None of them seem what they will be or continue in the previous way they, in the new normal. So uh, as you can see in the picture, a potential collateral damage from COVID-19 and the new normal will definitely be social distancing and potentially permanently. Across the globe, there are recommendations for staying at least two meters apart from each other to remain closer to our housemates, limit people going into stores, 
among many other measures. This is, however, only a small, a small part of the picture, as many behavioral and working patterns in construction sites will change, and activities such as long, lunch, for example, will have to be strictly controlled, with well-defined shifts and controlled seating spots. Strict cleaning procedures and rotations will become relevant for personal management. This may therefore become, as an example, a uh, part of the new norm or what we could consider the new normal will become a set of controlled and defined activities per working division or sector that if not managed properly or, or shifted periodically will make people fall into routines that in the long run could result in a lower productivity or even depression on sites where physical activity and contact is required. Uh, we do need to be very careful when resuming our regular activities, talk to people, gather opinions, and develop effective communication strategies that integrate the views of the people on this matter in such a way that this new normal, at least in construction, in construction site, could still bring joy to the people that used to enjoy these kind of activities with our colleagues. Uh, can you go to the next slide, Barbara, please? So some thoughts that I uh, would like to share is just that uh, we have to consider that behavioral and working patterns have been altered and common activities such as launching construction sites are changing. Strict cleaning procedures, rotations will become relevant for personal management and there's a possibility that unchanged routines could lead up to unproductive and depressing routines. So this is just a, a thought to introduce what our new speakers will be talking about and describing of what this new normal and challenges that infrastructure development and consulting engineering industry could look like. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rodrigo. Indeed, I think all, of, all our lives are going to change and we have to adapt as fast as possible in our industry. Once again, thank you. Our next speaker is Gautam Keda and Ravindra Shizvasta from India, talking to us about the infrastructure development and consulting engineering in the new normal. So please, the floor is yours. Yeah. So uh, thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's our pleasure uh, you know, to share our knowledge and thought process on infrastructure development and consulting engineering in the new normal. Uh, next slide. So all of us, uh, we know that the COVID-19, I, I always say Mr. COVID. So the president of the world is now Mr. COVID. So Mr. COVID uh, pandemic have, has disrupted the world's economy and the infrastructure and consulting engineering has no exception. Uh, there is a research of the global consulting industry research is that there is a revenue drop of almost 30 billion US dollars. And the estimated revenue loss to the consulting engineering and value chain is to the tune of 14 to 28 percent. So uh, it's very high impact compared to the other industries. Uh, in a similar way, uh, the impacts are in a manifold, uh, like acute labor shortages, health and safety risk, as my other colleague shown uh, uh, in a good pictorial format, uh, interrupted supply chains and logistics which is going to create uh, my schedule delays and liquidity and the cash flow issues. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, there are restrictions for the site supervision uh, by the consulting organizations and which will lead to the issue in the quality. Uh, and for the stakeholders, uh, they will, uh, for them, it's a decrease uh, in the return on investment and the projects are becoming unviable. So these are the high impact areas and most of the consulting organizations have gone through in last six months. So, uh, but at the same time, all difficulties come with the opportunity and uh, there are uh, good innovative solutions and the opportunities uh, uh, which I would like to highlight in the key prior five priority areas. Next slide. Uh, so uh, one of the first area is workforce management. Uh, the need of the hour is uh, the management of the workforce by doing change of mindset and to the greater extent of the self-discipline. Uh, as uh, you know, we all have learned. At the same time, the social distancing, stagger shifts, and the work from home are the new norms uh, uh, at the moment. Uh, the, the greater extent, the workforce engagement and the process improvement is the key over here. 
So uh, the organization needs to do the gap assessment uh, based on the new norms and then upskilling and the stretch roles will be uh, the part of the exercise and the senior management will be involved into the uh, recovery, not only financial recovery, but also from the growth recovery perspective as well. At the same time, uh, the companies are going to uh, use huge technology adoptions for to improve and strengthen the absenteeism management processes at the same time to promote flexible compensation models uh, for the greater level of the engagement. Uh, at the same time, we have seen uh, various parts of the world, uh, there is a need of the community partnership. Uh, when I say community partnership, it is like the development of the local talent and uh, uh, it will help for the local localization uh, along with uh, the global intent. Uh, my second key area is the accelerated adoptions of the technology for the process and the supply chain improvement because uninterrupted interrupted supply chains is one of the key uh, you know, impacts and how we can mitigate this by using the uh, use networking and the collaboration. The local development of uh, the engineering, construction, and the manufacturing uh, will be the key buzzword over here. We have seen that there are lots of precast and uh, the pre-engineering buildings are happening locally, and then it has been transported. And by various means, even many countries, the developed world is using the water transportation, uh, you know, for, uh, to save the environment. And uh, that is how you can mitigate uh, some of the local uh, issues. And uh, globally with the crowd engineering, you can uh, work uh, on your construction point. At the same time, uh, we have seen the use of technology which was proven in the past, like 3D printing is becoming more popular in the world in last six months. Uh, and construction simulation and the modeling. Uh, because you can work this remotely once you have all the coordinates and uh, the engineers can work from any part of the world. Uh, it will help uh, uh, to increase the productivity and to reduce the rework. So these are the some of the keywords uh, which will help uh, through accelerated technology adoption. Next slide. Uh, at the same time, uh, the companies uh, are having a cash flow issues. So the financial restructuring, tax, and the trade uh, is another third pillar of our uh, innovative sol solution. Uh, many governments across the world have introduced the lots of packages, the relief packages, and there are policy changes as well. Now, companies also need to reassess their existing contracts, the long-term contracts, uh, the contracts with the low profitability or even with the mid-term profitability. Uh, they need to have a clear cut defined strategy how to deal with it. At the same time, uh, they need to convert some of the monthly cost plus margin contracts whenever they are entering into the future contracts so that they can ease out their the cash flow. And at the same time, they need to collaborate more with the lenders and the stakeholders to have a continual communication to avoid the losses. At the same time, uh, it's a time for uh, the restructuring within the organization and the liquidation of the non-core or underperforming assets, which will help the organizations to remove those uh, white helpers. Uh, the merger and acquisitions is going to be the key. Uh, and I'm sure it's a need of the hour because within the organization, uh, there will be a merger and acquisitions of the departments. At the same time in the large, for example, if I say the top 10 ENR uh, uh, based consultants or the EPC contractors, uh, you know, they will look for more opportunities uh, in the niche area. Again, it is linked with the gap assessment and the upscaling of the organization to offer the new service area. The fourth pillar of uh, my presentation is uh, the remote working by digitization, transformation, and collaboration. Now, I mean, we all know it's, it's, it's non-negotiable. Non the way Cost been shown in his uh, first slide, uh, you know, various, uh, uh, various uh, uh, workshops happened uh, in physically, and today we are doing virtually. I mean, and still, uh, at a time, there are more than 150 participants who are uh, pre presenting and, uh, you know, participating in this. On a similar way, uh, uh, we need to set up a command control center for the centralized operations and the monitoring of all the contracts, which will help for uh, to improve the consistency and to slash the cycle time of uh, the engineering and construction projects. At the same time, we will get intelligent data 
uh, uh, through this process and that data is going to act as a big uh, time in the future and it will also have the standardization uh, with all these automated tools uh, basically to reduce recycle uh, the complete engineering uh, and it will help uh, the youngsters as well uh, the fifth point is the identification of the pain points within the organization and uh, knowing the competitor landscape also equally and potential innovative solutions. So organizations need to be versatile for the re-implementation of the value engineering and construction methodologies. Because uh, in the new norms, you need to come out with a new value engineering and construction methodology suiting to your stakeholders. And for this, you need to use the collective wisdom. The collective wisdom to mitigate the conflicts between various stakeholders at the same time to evolve and encourage the amicable resolution on various clauses. We have seen, and I'm sure the critic would have come across, the various disputes on account of force measure, the interpretation of the force measure, the cost escalation, the delay damages, and the risk assessment. And I'm sure uh, in the new norms, uh, the future contract, the people will be more sensible and will be using the collective wisdom. In the summary, I would like to say, the businesses need a paradigm shift. It's a mindset game at the end of the day, and they need to have a good balance between the lump sum contract and the man one contract. Uh, by using uh, the rigorous uh, adoption of the technology, collaboration, and the rational thinking uh, with the smart financial restructuring. And I would say that uh, it will certainly help to revive and thrive in the post-COVID-19 uh, world. So thank you very much for listening to me patiently. Thank you all. Thank you very much again, Gautu Kamar. Indeed, uh, I think you are right. The businesses are going to, to think to uh, a paradigm shift and nothing is going to be the same like it was before. Once again, thank you. Then our next speaker is Jessica Rahmond. Uh, she is a very active member of our committee and being the past uh, chair of FIDIC Future Leaders Africa. So Jessica, please, the floor is yours. Thank you, Kazman. A very good afternoon to you all. Um, it's such a pleasure to be part of this panel um, and to represent FIDIC Future Leaders um, and FIDIC Africa. Uh, so the COVID-19 pandemic has set in motion uh, unprecedented rates of change globally. Um, and cons uh, the consulting uh, and the engineering industry, however essential we may be, um, has not really been immune uh, to the challenges that we've experienced. So on the backdrop of this global economic recession, um, the shutdown and the subsequent reopening of the world for business, I've spent much time thinking about my role and that of the future leaders in the new normal. So the inspiration for my article in the special edition of the FIDIC Future Leaders booklet was sparked by a webinar that I attended during lockdown that was hosted by the International Finance Corporation of the World Bank Group. And they looked at the innovation in funding uh, by envisioning a sustainable world through what they called the green reset of control, alt, delete. This got me thinking about what a great reset would look like in the infrastructure and consulting engineering sector. And my vision is for future leaders to be at the center of this. Over the past few months, while firms have looked to technology and creativity to maintain business continuity, um, and focusing on survival, that meant mitigating job losses. We have seen several vulnerabilities in our sector come to light. And we must acknowledge the critical role of engineers to the infrastructure aspirations of countries and the multiplier effect of infrastructure development on countries' economies. So from our perspective, there's a dire need for the redefinition of the role of future leaders in the infrastructure development value chain. Um, however, some of these barriers uh, uh, to inclusion of future leaders um, does prove to be a barrier for uh, movement within the sector. And these include uh, the need to improve the wider procurement of professional services, including the improvement of skills across the supply chain, uh, the commoditization of quality and professional engineering services on a cost basis, um, and the heavy reliance on the tendering system for work. Um, Thirdly, the improper project structuring, uh, financial mechanisms, and project implementers. And this results in, um, in mismatched priorities between stakeholders, 
And this is particularly seen in basic infrastructure projects, particularly in developing countries. And finally, the lack of emphasis on securing the engineering skills in a way, on securing the engineering skills pipeline in a way that creates a sustainable pipeline through which skills are retained, which is at the expense of the development of future graduates and future leaders. So on this backdrop, for us to envision our own great reset, what will our control of delete be? Um, for me, a reset in consulting engineering will mean the opportunity to control the impacts of our actions, to alter our thoughts and behaviors, and to delete the things that didn't work for us and our sector in the past. And what we can do to actively reset for a more sustainable and inclusive consulting engineering sector, some of which would include um, the active engagement with decision makers, and this would ensure that the, uh, ensure the development and the use of experienced and competent engineering professionals who act responsibly with sustainable development at the cornerstone of the profession. Uh, secondly, uh, to revisiting our understanding uh, and thinking on the type of work and the impact we have with various stakeholders, such as initiators, funders, innovators, and annuity partners in long-term infrastructure projects. And it also means a redefinition of extending um, uh, to, to taking on a more active role in infrastructure operation and maintenance to deliver whole life cycle project solutions. Um, this would also mean that we should be mindful in project structuring because it is as important as the outcome and the physical infrastructure created. So this includes capacity building of local engineering professionals and contractors, um, the use of indigenous and local materials to stimulate microeconomies whilst utilizing appropriate solutions and technology for the beneficiary communities. But most importantly, it's in recognizing the value that future leaders bring to a firm and to the engineering industry at large. So employing young talent is like a fresh coat of paint for the workplace. And whilst the baby boomers and Generation X, uh, Xs have a valuable role to play in organizations, as discussed by our previous speakers, uh, the rapidly evolving global landscape and the disruption that we live through requires the proper utilization and skills and mindset of millennials and Generation Z to navigate the uncertainty with unique vision, agility of thought and action to take the industry into the new normal. So adapting and improving uh, uh, a business unusual approach hinges on capitalizing on the factors that we can influence in our organizations. And that means we can influence who has influence and how much influence they have. So raising the level of influence of future leaders in firms and across the industry brings with it five things. One is it brings new energy and perspective. Two, it brings flexibility in adapting to and creating new culture and strategy. Three, it brings opportunities to drive business forward with technology advancement and early adoption. Four, it brings innovation, adaptability, and agility. And five, it brings high levels of social awareness and corporate citizenship that prioritizes business, diversity, and inclusion. So in closing, I'd like to say, um, Albert Einstein said, we can't solve problems by using the same kind of thinking we used when we created them. So in a great reset of consulting engineering, to solve the problems we're experiencing, who better to bring new solutions than to engage those who already think differently? And those are the future leaders. Um, I encourage you to uh, read the future leaders e-booklet um, and uh, engage with us on social media. So thank you, and I hand over to Adam. Thank you very much, Ashika. Um, it was really interesting to listen to you, at especially the, the last part, the last third of your presentation about the future leaders and the, the power that they give to our corporations. And we can see FIDIC embracing that in recent years. Uh, I would like just to wrap up uh, what our session, uh, session was about. So uh, Rodrigo mentioned the reflection on how infrastructure development is impacting even the simplest aspects of life how behavioral and working patterns are getting altered. Uh, he mentioned about COVID-19 that it's not only impacting the way we do business, but also how we live in everyday activities. Uh, Guatam mentioned that uh, the changes in workflows management processes, uh, the product and supply chain improvement, 
This is all uh, will need an accelerated technology uh, adoption, even faster than it was before. Uh, remote working by uh, digitization and transformation and collaboration. He also mentioned financial structuring, tax, uh, trade and innovative solutions to help uh, smaller and medium businesses, especially in consultancy uh, with cash flow and, and survival. Uh, Jessica uh, mentioned uh, adapting and improving bu uh, bu business usual approach uh, hinges mainly on uh, capitalizing the factors that influence within our uh, organizations. And she put a heavy uh, in, um, uh, mention of future leaders that we bring new energy, new perspective, flexibility, and maybe are quicker to adapt to change. And that's why this diversity and inclusion of future leaders might actually help uh, your business in the long run. Um, what I like, Jessica always has good quotes, and she said that we needed we need new solutions to solve these old problems. So. Um, I encourage all of you to think pretty widely if you even look at FIDIC and what FIDIC's doing with the young professionals and future leaders and how uh, by analogy we can transition this into our companies and our uh, corporate structures because the energy level uh, of future leaders can actually help transition, especially in this difficult COVID-19 moment and the change in the workplace that's taking place. I just wanted to also mention uh, a little bit about Cosmin. Cosmin, I wanted to thank you personally for the two years that you put in as chair. Uh, you are a good friend and you will, you're leaving big shoes to fill, but I hope us uh, uh, that remain future leaders, you are already becoming now a leader, not a future leader. So I hope we can, we can uh, keep the torch, so to speak. Uh, for the people that don't know, we have 22 members from the entire world of uh, different gender, different race, uh, different ethnical background. We have 31 subcommittees that we are uh, heavily all involved in and, and are trying to produce uh, material, whether it's the e-booklet, whether it's the webinars that were uh, produced by FIDIC and also by us individually. Um, we are, have upcoming elections for our future vice chair, so uh, please stay tuned to that. As soon as that happens, we'll let you know uh, who the new vice chair is. And um, if you need anything from us, as Jessica mentioned, you can find us on LinkedIn, you can find us on Facebook, just type in future, FIDIC future leaders, whether Facebook, whether LinkedIn, and uh, we are ready to help you if you want to get involved. We also have um, methods of getting you involved in our subcommittees and if you plan eventually to become a member of our committee we invite that participation also so thank you very much and I hope you enjoy uh, the next session thank you very much Adam uh, and thank you very much for the nice words indeed it's uh, it's coming uh, step by step because two years has already passed since I am the chair and you are going to be the vice chair. So the, we are rotating now the mandate and everything. And also you are right, always Jessica is, is finishing uh, her presentations with very, very nice quotes. And these quotes always are, uh, are sticking to you and you will, are going always to remember her presentations by this. I wanted to say that uh, as usual, we are very good on time and I think we respect the agenda very, very well. So we are going to have a few minutes for question and answers. So please, the participants, uh, you can put in the, in the chat box the questions. But uh, until then, I would like uh, to ask uh, the FIDIC officials, the FIDIC president, Mr. William Howard, the FIDIC CEO, Mr. Nelson Ogunshakin, and the FIDIC liaison to the board, Mr. Mark Davis. How do you see the future leaders' development in the next years? And because this is a discussion that I already had with, uh, with Adam about the future. And how do you see that us as future leaders can be closer to you at, uh, at the board level? Uh, Nelson, uh, with your permission, I'd like to mention one thing. Please, Bill, go ahead. <laughs> yes, um, and I, I, <clears throat> I'm a little bit like a broken record over and over again saying the same thing, but it's something I, I have a lot of passion about, and it is specific. Um, and that is the State of the World initiative <clears throat> that um, Nelson and I and the board have uh, enthusiastically embraced um, moving that initiative uh, forward 
uh, using social media and better communication tools, <clears throat> you know, that fit more <clears throat> with uh, the year 2020 and beyond. Um, we're tying that State of the World Initiative um, into the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, especially, I believe, Goals 6 and 8. I may have the numbers wrong, but that relate to, um, to water. But really tying them into both. So um, I see, I, and I hope I'm right, but I, I see a connection between the Sustainable Development Committee and the future leaders um, to help the Secretariat and the board um, move this initiative forward, which I honestly hope will be going on long after I'm gone. Um, and the, the basic message that I'm very passionate about, and I'm sure you are as well, is to emphatically state the, the lack of infrastructure investment, which has been going on for a very long time. I was looking back in my notes of a speech I gave at ACEC 25 years ago, and I was talking about inadequate infrastructure investment. Um, so that's one. Then of course, climate change and, and sustainability. Um, we as professional engineers, I, I'm sure we all agree, we have an obligation to, to communicate those critical needs globally, wherever we can, but not just to communicate the needs. We also need to communicate that engineers, professional engineers are the right people to help address the problem through being trusted advisors and that kind of thing. Um, so, I'm, I'm, I know I'm on a bit of a soapbox here, but I'm really, really passionate. And I hope to goodness that I can look back um, five or six years from now uh, as a past president and say, boy, they really took this thing forward. You've got the talent to do it and you have the enthusiasm. And this new sustainable development committee has got some great people in it. So the potential is huge. Um, that's my one comment. I'm a little bit out of breath. <laughs> Go ahead, Nelson. Thanks very much, Bill. I oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm remiss in thanking Cosman so much for, for your effort, Cosman. I, I, I should have said that right up front. Um, you, you've been terrific with us, and, uh, and we're looking forward to, uh, to Adam as well. I'm very sorry that I didn't mention that before. So go ahead, Nelson. Thanks very much, Bill. Um, Bill and I do this sort of, uh, you know, two running issue, you know, so I take Bill to take the lead and, and I'll try and fill the gap. Bill, I think you've said it really, the state of the world is something that we completely revamp and it's not going to be one bulky document. And I think if I remember in the previous conversation, Cosme was part of that, where Tony actually, by the way, sent his apology, it's very late in, in the evening in Australia, and under the lockdown, unfortunately, he can't join us. So he sent his apology. Tony's comment was, we need to be very quick. We need to be very agile. When we produce the old state of the world, there were bulky document that by the time you produce it, it's actually not digestible. It takes quite a long time. So the new idea is to make it more digestible, more sharp, more quick. And it gave us opportunity to engage all our future leaders at different level. Uh, so I do believe that's a fantastic platform to start off with. Second point, I think I also mentioned this in my previous conversation uh, that you know our committees now, we've done everything possible, both in terms of gender diversity and also to make sure we inbuild the future leaders in every single stage. Now, I'm pleased that Cosme, you're stepping down here, you're handing over to Adam, but you are going to be in the Sustainability Development Committee. So we've planned you in that particular area to make sure we maintain that particular impotence moving forward. But actually, I will touch on two things, which I think is quite important. Uh, one of the biggest issues that we've been trying to deal with, and particularly those of you who are involved also in diversity and inclusion committee, is the need for us to change the statute and the bylaw. And the reason for that is, you know, Bill and Tony have been championing the idea that we need to find a way to connect a number of councils with the board. As you know, cost me the, 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 the future leaders are not part of the board. But ever since I came on board two years ago, and I made a appeal at that, 
you know, I, I pleaded to the board in Berlin that I want to see the future leader council or committee chair to attend the board meeting. I also said I want to see the director and secretary council chair to attend the board meeting. And you know something, the board listened to me. And we've engaged and we've encouraged you to be party to that. And I want to continue that. But if we do get the changes to the statute and bylaw, there is a clause there that guarantee an opportunity for us to make that a future for the future, which means the chair of the council, this particular council, and the chair of the DNS will have an opportunity to become a side partner with the board and to be able to support board, not just as an add-on, but actually as a proactive platform. So I do believe there is an opportunity to do that. The other point, which I actually said in Mexico, and I'm not sure whether you all picked the message. I, I think I left a, a really seed in, your, you know, in my conversation with you in Mexico. I said, there will be a position in the future coming to the board. And I want to challenge the future leaders, particularly those who are graduating, if I can use that word, those who are graduating, those who are mature, those who've been there, who've done it and really has got expertise. I mean, I look around, there's Richard there. You know, one of the pioneers of the future leaders, you know? And I see Jessica, she's quoting, you know, what the IFI is saying. She's quoting where the new future is being. I see Cosme coming through. Hey, guys, don't wait for too long. In a couple of years' time, there will be vacancy there. Make a pitch for it. Make a pitch for it, okay? I'm so bold trying to change this. Make a pitch for it. Don't let me come and chase you. Make a pitch for it. So when the opportunities are coming up in future, Put your name in the hat, bang the door. If you don't get through first time, get through second time. So I'm a biggest advocate of the future leader. So I just want to leave the thoughts in your mind. We, we don't see the future of Felix without the future leaders. In my mind, I'm not going to be here for, the, for too long. I'm an advocate of bringing them in as quickly as possible. And as Jessica said, we don't use the old mentality to deal with the new challenge, bring the new one in. That's a means of paraphrasing what she said. So I'm really keen to make sure at every stage, while I'm the CEO of Felix, I will do everything possible in my capacity to make sure we effect a sustainable change to get the future leader in a position of influence. I think that was the word. That was the word I was looking for from Jessica, position of influence. I used the phrase, I nicked it. You have to be around the table, otherwise you become part of the menu. I want you to be around the table and they become part of the debate and we can find a sustainable solution. So I hope that's been very useful. Trust me, thank you. Thank you very much, Nelson and Bill. Mark? Yeah, I will, uh, I will, I will keep short. I think a lot of good, good things have been said by, uh, by Nelson and, and, uh, and also by you, uh, Bill. Um, I think future leaders, and you've demonstrated that, you are masters of connectivity. You can connect to, 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 to everyone around us. And let's say one of the, the key pillars of the, of the strategic uh, plan of, of FIDIC is being the nexus to all our stakeholders. So I would say take that position because you have the, almost a natural, natural behavior of doing that. So you can really support FIDIC in that way. Um, I would say also uh, choose, your, choose your battles. So make sure that you really um, um, uh, take your positions in those areas where you really can make a difference. Climate change was mentioned, uh, mentioned uh, sustainability. Uh, so really claim that area. And uh, uh, Nelson already gave an invite. You're welcome at every, at every corner uh, of FIDIC, in every, uh, in every uh, pocket of FIDIC, you're welcome as, as, uh, as future leaders. And I think uh, yeah, it would be great that uh, if, if uh, through that connectivity that you have amongst yourselves, that you really make that connection to member associations and member firms. And especially, I mentioned that also in my introduction, not only the mature, larger companies, but especially the small ones. Because the, the small ones and the mid-sized companies are often a bit more entrepreneurial. And they, they often have a lot of people, a lot of staff with, with creativity, innovative solutions. And it would be great if you can create that connection to also the smaller firms. And so that would be, uh, that, that's my view on uh, future leaders. And uh, yeah, what I see, uh, again, there's almost a natural friendship between yourselves. So I see a seamless uh, connection from you, Cosmin, uh, to Adam. So Adam, all the best. 
Thank you very much, Mark. Yeah, indeed, uh, we created uh, in, beside us, we created like, uh, it's, it's clear because we are friends. We are very happy when we meet. We are very happy when we are going to, to conferences and presenting the papers because I, I wanted to, to answer to a question on the chat, which is Jitendra Singh from, uh, from ASPAC uh, put. Jitendra is also one of our very active members in ASPAC, Future Leaders. And uh, his question is uh, to me directly, if I can share one thing that I might wish that I have achieved and I would uh, be looking forward for the next leadership to accomplish now. It's a discussion that I have with Adam, which beside being the colleague in, the, in FIDIC, he's also one of my best friends. And I can say that uh, the discussion is for, for us, for the future leaders to step forward. We need a little bit more visibility. We need, we need more to be presented at events. I think we, we accomplished in having very good programs, very strict programs, very good papers, and we would like to have uh, this appearance to be much more often in different conferences and events. And also, another thing is because we had, uh, and um, unfortunately this year, we couldn't have the, the FIDIC Future Leaders Award because of the, the pandemic. And I think for us, it's a very important award to have a FIDIC Future Leader Award by each year. And I'm pretty sure that I'm going to see each and every one of you next year in Geneva. And it's going to be quite different to see each other face to face than uh, seeing all your faces, but on a screen. So, because we are having only four minutes and I want to have a very, very fast uh, answer from each speaker. Uh, my question to, to the speakers, and here I mean a uh, question to, to Rodrigo, to Jessica, to Adam and Gautam Mar, but very, very fast. How do you think that the pandemic is going to influence our industry? Rodrigo? Sure. Um, so first of all, uh, one of the things that I really think is, it definitely has allowed us to to make new um, innovative ways of, of solving things because we were really used to go to the office and try to fix something over there and try to, 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 to solve any issue right away. And in this way, we are trying to create new, new ways to solve uh, different, pro different problems as soon as, as they come up. We engage more with the people uh, that we work with, but not, not only in the professional way. We we also engage with them in the social way. Uh, we try to think about about them as a person with their families and how they are living this situation. Because if everyone feels connected with the person they are working with, not only on a professional level but on a social level, um, there is this. Um, there's this way to connect with them on a more personal level and be committed. So I think that's also one of the things that I would say that it's, it's, it's allowed us to work more as a team and closer together. If Thank you, Rodrigo. One minute case that I can give from our uh, business here in Poland is we've had our first client that we tendered, we signed the contract, we executed the job and we invoiced without ever meeting in person. So I think that's uh, something that has never happened in my career before when I'm pretty young and uh, it's already changed dramatically since my first days in the office and to, to this half a year recently. So just, just a case study or a symbol maybe. Thanks Adam. Gautam Kumar, can you please say something? Yeah, so uh, I just want to extend what Adam said. Uh, Basically, uh, we also had the same experience. Uh, so pandemic have, has, you know, uh, opened the mindset in terms of the sustainability. I would use the word sustainability for the organization. So I have seen two type of organizations, say one organization, which is 100 year old organization already. And there are few organizations which are startup organizations, or there are, you know, they have completed just five years of their journey. So uh, the mindset and the challenges uh, are different. So I see that there are a few old drivers, uh, you know, uh, they will be on their uh, on, on their uh, end of uh, the career. But at the same time, there are lots of new drivers which are going to emerge. And I see that post pandemic, uh, 
there is lots of startup and the scale of structures are going to emerge because uh, in the new norms there are new needs for the people and as adam said that uh, you know without even meeting the people uh, uh, the complete work was uh, executed and i see that lots of crowd engineering is going to happen now uh, you know all all part of the world i mean and i saw there are uh, there are early startups like every eng uh, from uk and amsterdam uh, uh, so the idea is that uh, the collaboration and the networking is going to be the key uh, and which will lead to the sustainability so the board uh, the board uh, member despite they had lots of strategy uh, in the past but now uh, they are really thinking most of the strategy of failed most of the ceo had a issue thank so you i see that uh, uh, you know i see the new mindset and uh, this is the best initiative of the future leaders even in the organizations people have to adopt this strategy to take the views from the future leaders this is thank what you very i much, got thank you very much uh, as uh, we came to the uh, end of our uh, symposium for this year I would like to thank very much to all of our speakers and to all the FIDIC officials that were in, uh, part of this symposium. And I can tell you that uh, we are going to have a small break now, 10 minutes comfort break, and then we are going to return for the ceremony for recognition of participants to the Future Leaders Management Certificate Program. Once again, I want to tell you and thank you all for being your chair for these two years. And I can tell you that during these times, all of us are going to be called to rebuild our world. Maybe this time we have a very good chance to do it very good. Thank you very much and see you in 10 minutes.
Uh, once again, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Somehow we seem to have a bit of a technology issue. Hopefully we can resolve that. Uh, my name is Nelson Ogun Shakin, for those who doesn't know who I am. Uh, I believe we have over 121 people online joining us in this particular session. Uh, this session is to do with the recognition of the Future Leader Management Certificate Program. Normally, we will post to have this opportunity to present our award to those who participated in this year program, but due to the COVID-19, this is not possible. So we are taking the best platform we can to share the story for this year. And before I actually step into a particular conversation, a reflection back onto this program in 2004, the first program was held. When I came into office in 2018, there was a debate, should we change it or not change it? Should we improve it? And I'm pleased that we took the decision that we should do that. And on that note, we put a new program together based on the old one. And I'm delighted that this year has been a fantastic success, notwithstanding the challenges of the COVID-19. It is my pleasure to invite our president, Bill Howard, who's here to say a few words to welcome the team into play. Bill, the floor is yours. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Nelson, and, and I will be brief. Uh, I want to, uh, first of all, uh, thank everyone involved in uh, putting these, this training program together. Uh, as Nelson uh, said, it's been going on since, uh, uh, since 2004. Uh, can you hear me, by the way? We can hear you, Bill. We can okay, talk. great. Great, I had something on my screen that indicated that that might be a problem. At any rate, it's been going on now for uh, close to 15 years and we have made some modifications to it, but uh, it reflects a, uh, a lot of work uh, and effort by, uh, by a number of people. So um, we're, uh, we're very thankful um, that, uh, that they have uh, stepped up and helped with this uh, tremendously important initiative. And this initiative is important to FedEx. <clears throat> it's also uh, obviously important to um, our member associations and member firms. Um, there's a lot of potential with this program actually to expand it. Over the summer, there were two or three uh, webinars that the uh, future leaders put on where we were discussing uh, things, uh, things that um, maybe we could improve upon. And one of the things that struck me um, is there are potential member associations out there that maybe have limited participation in future leaders or none at all. And uh, that's something I, that offers us the potential to, uh, to grow this very successful program even further. Um, the other thing that I'd obviously uh, state is to congratulate the graduates. Uh, you've put a lot of work in. Uh, in uh, the training program has certainly been fruitful to you as individuals. And one thing we hear over and over and over again um, is the value of the networking. Even though you've mostly networked remotely, um, it still is tremendously valuable. And you will find uh, as you move uh, along in your career that the networks that you have uh, established with programs such in this will last for your such as this will last for your entire career and will add tremendous value. You'll find uh, that some of you might end up being clients, some of you owners, some of you will be teaming together on, uh, on major projects and uh, maybe uh, on occasion you'll be competing, but you'll always uh, have some knowledge of who you are and uh, you'll have mutual respect and camaraderie, which is something that helps all of us in, in any profession. So. Um, congratulations once again, and I'll turn it back to you, Nelson. Thank you very much, uh, Bill, for that uh, opening welcome statement. Uh, without spending too much time, I'm now going to invite Ben Novak, who is uh, one of the, uh, the, the, the lecturer, to present this year's program. And afterward, we'll call Bill back to say a few words to close out. So, Bill, don't go. I do need you. So, Ben, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I am so impressed with this dynamism we just had from the YPs in that meeting. I've taken some notes, actually. You might have seen me taking notes. 
I'd like to welcome all participants from across the world. And we hear that we have over 100 participants at this point, I think Nelson said. I want to have a special greeting to our FIDIC president, Bill Howard, and to CEO uh, of the of FIDIC, Dr. Nelson Orkenshaken, and to our training manager, Dr. Sylvia Fossati, who, whose guidance and internal organization was of great assistance to us. Let me just say that we are most enthusiastic about the new program, which we developed in rather short time, and the great reception by over 60 participants. We, as your trainers, are happy to share this moment with all of you because it's a great moment. Michael? Thanks, Ben. Um, the FIDIC Future Leaders Management Certificate course and its content are being celebrated today, uh, which in our opinion is at the master's level of many universities. It's based on three of the five FIDIC priorities. Uh, first one being leading the consultancy and engineering industry visibly and effectively, which is really the focus of our instructional content that we had um, with a focus on people, uh, financials and project management. The second being to strengthen FIDIC's position in, all, in the overall construction industry, uh, furthered by the contract uh, text discussions. And third, to connect and support our members more effectively. Uh, giving local member associations, uh, as Bill was saying, uh, to expand this out, uh, to offer them training and resources that they might not have. Uh, back to you, Ben. Oh, you're on mute, Ben. Muted. I thought I was automatically unmuted. Okay. Uh, we have a slide here that illustrates in one slide the total content of this course. But before I go into that, I'd like to say a special thanks to Rodrigo Juarez, who was a delegate from the Future Leaders Group to comment on our courses before they were finalized. So thank you, Rodrigo. This uh, diagram best summarizes the concept of the online program, as well as its academic uh, requirements for participants. We show this because many of you out there are YPs or perhaps are not YPs, but are going to consider sending some of your YPs to this program. So you should know a little bit about the content. FIDIC issues a cherished certificate for all who satisfy the completion conditions. That is what today is all about. It is your show participants. By the way, we note that former graduates of previous such courses have found themselves in positions of leadership in their consulting companies, and many have even founded their own companies. Richard? Ben, thank you very much uh, to all the graduates. Again, congratulations. And the importance of being involved in consulting practices is uh, quite well known by, by all of you and by all of us. And one of the the pieces of information that uh, you were able to rely upon throughout the uh, the course and the uh, the training opportunities was the FIDIC Guide to Practice. This, along with other resource materials, were made available to all the participants of our program. And uh, it's important to note that uh, several of the DFS founders were involved in the development of the Guide to Practice itself. Regarding DFS and regarding the the, the FIDIC Future Leaders Training Program. This uh, DFS was conceived approximately 10 years ago, and uh, the senior partners of the organization successfully partnered, created, and delivered all of the material that uh, you were able to experience over the last several months regarding uh, in-house seminars, the development of the teaching programs, and putting together uh, throughout uh, the, the work of DFS, national and international programs and seminars. The DFS team, uh, is, is incorporated off the idea of design firm seminars. That's what DFS stands for. And the five senior, senior members of the organization have over 100 years of experience in the consulting engineering industry. They have longstanding attachments to FIDIC. They've been involved within FIDIC for many, many years and have contributed in many different ways in addition to the training programs. And in addition to uh, allowing this program to be a great success working with all of the 66 uh, members this year of the future leaders training program, uh, they added several younger members of the team in order to provide uh, different global experiences 
uh, cultural experiences, knowledge, and uh, expertise of the team. So between Michael, Michelle, and myself, uh, we were invited to be part of DFS, and uh, we appreciate the opportunity to be of service to all of you throughout the, the training program. So now over to Michelle. Hi, it's John. Uh, I'd just like to stress also that some of the material that we're presenting here uh, is, uh, is the kind of material that is complex and requires a people approach when it's, when it's being implemented successfully. For example, material on uh, integrity management, sustainability management, it's not just a matter of facts, it's a matter of a diplomatic approach to make sure that the, uh, the required systems can be implemented effectively within your own firm. Now I'll go on to Michelle. Thank you um, so much. So when this pro program was originally designed, it was before the pandemic. But as we've shown, and as circumstances would have it, we were not that effective. So that makes it a very successful virtual learning program that consists of six two-hour webinars, each delivered by two trainers. So you get uh, the different aspects on each subject. And it's open to either live participation or through online recordings. So participants are then challenged to demonstrate their understanding of selected management concepts by working online to ask specific, answer specifically formulated case studies related to various subjects from the webinars, which are then commented on by the trainers. Successful completion of three of these cases and passing the online exam at the end of this program has led us to our celebrations today. So FIDIC will issue the certificates of completion which will be useful in many contexts, including aiding in formal recognition of the training by local licensing agencies. And I just wanna say, I enjoyed the training so much and I look forward to each of you being successful. Thank you. Andrew. Thank you. And Michelle, like you, I enjoyed it very much, the, uh, doing the program this year. It was an interesting experience for uh, uh, not only the YPs, but some of the older Ps as well. Well, there was one important change, of course, this year. An original option of the program was an additional session, and that would have been in Geneva, and attendance at the annual conference. Unfortunately, this option could not be offered this year due to the pandemic, which forced the cancellation, of course, of the entire Geneva conference. We went virtual. We hope to be able to offer it again next year in Geneva, and all this year's students who opted to attend the conference are invited under the original conditions to attend in 2021, along with the new registrants for the 2021 program. The predecessor of the FED, uh, FLMNC, Future, Fed Future Leaders Management Program, finished with a pre-conference session, including workshops with the trainers and the team building exercise, culminating in the presentation to the conference, which was always a highlight for the participants. Now on to you, Robin. Robin, can you unmute? Thank you. Thanks, Andy. We had uh, foreseen a similar but shorter challenge for conference participants, as described in the original program. The actual face-to-face -face meetings and collaboration on the major project we had in mind have additional advantages on many levels. So let's well, hope we can finally meet in Geneva next year. And lastly, you, the participants, have also helped us, that is to say, you students, you graduates, have also helped us immensely to make this great initiative even better by answering the satisfaction survey at the end of the program. And we are pleased with your generally overwhelming approval of the content and format. So next slide, please. So as an introduction to the, uh, the uh, naming of the graduates. We had 66 registered participants from 27 countries across the globe and 63 of those 66 actually completed three case studies and all of those 63 took and passed the exam and all 63 graduates obtained the final FLMC award. Next slide please. 
as uh, we always do uh, at the uh, conferences, we announce the uh, winners of the, um, uh, or not the winners, but the, the graduates who passed with 100% in the exam. And I'm pleased to say that we have five uh, graduates this year who all got 100%. Derek Cheen from Taiwan, Kungu Gitur Cherry from Kenya, David Ellis from Canada, Diego Saloma from Panama, and Mohamed Bazi from Saudi Arabia. And please look at that amazing distribution right across the globe. Fantastic. Congratulations, all five of you. Next slide, please. So here we have uh, our graduates for 2020. This is team one, who mainly came from Asia and the Pacific. We have Chen Wei Li from Taiwan, Chang Xiao Chen from Taiwan, Chi Lun Lo from Taiwan, Chun Ming Wen from Taiwan, Jiayun Kim from Taiwan, Dai Ho Kim from the Republic of Korea, Derek Chin from Taiwan, Elijah Alfati from Sudan, Erwin Chu from Taiwan, Gerald Wahl from the Philippines, Haile Yezus Mengesha from Kazakhstan, Huswang Lu Lin from Taiwan. Next slide, please. Then we have Jason Lee from Republic of Korea, Sung Fu Huang from Taiwan, Kaya Fujiwara from Japan, Kidong King from the Republic of Korea, Chun Yi Li from Taiwan, Kungu Guturaji from Kenya, Shin Hu Li Taiwan, Mik Yu from Taiwan, Mingru Li from Taiwan, Pokai Chen from Taiwan, Sam Johnson from Australia, and Soigen Li from uh, Republic of Korea. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. No, still one more. Yes, thank you. And finally, to complete the Team 1 graduates, we have Yu Qian Lei from Taiwan and Quan Wen Chu from Taiwan. And all in all, we had 38 members in Team 1, and all of them passed the uh, uh, final exam. Thank you. The next slide, please. So here we have team two, which is mainly from uh, Europe and the Americas, and also some from uh, the Middle East. We have Ahmed Fazi from Afghanistan, Aparna Krishan from Canada, Atul Deshmukh from Canada, Chantal Dagnol from France, Christian Fuller from Germany, David Ellis from Canada, Diego Saloma from Panama, Frey Watseleke from Ethiopia, Gastone Maschietti from Italy, Gloria Kemigishi from Ghana, Gustavo Cada from uh, Panama, Gaba Molna from Hungary. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Oh, it's there already. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Iftika Ahmad from Saudi Arabia, Katerina Matic from Serbia, Kutlo Modi from Botswana, Laura Keane from Canada, Lini Nashkidashvili, Georgia, Matthew Taylor from the UK, Mohamed Bazi from, oh, now this is being covered up here. From the UAE. Nadia Lopez Pena from Spain, Nicholas Kaminsky from Canada, Rajman Sebok from Hungary, Richard Ofori Ado from Ghana, and Ogukan Perchin from Ukraine. Next slide, please. And last but not least, Florian Kaki from Germany. Next slide, please. So that's the graduates for this year. Congratulations to them all. And I'll pass over to Bill Howard for his final words. Thank you very much, uh, Robin, for that. Bill, uh, I think the floor is yours to say congratulations. And there is a slide after that. Uh, Bill, if you're still there. Yes. Well, thank you, Nelson. And uh, let me echo uh, wholehearted congratulations 
uh, to team one and team two. It's uh, very impressive uh, how diverse uh, you all are. And as I mentioned in, in the beginning, uh, you have great opportunities ahead of you uh, to keep that network going with your classmates, but also broadly uh, or in a more broad concept with, uh, with other classes uh, of future leaders. Uh, it's a, it'll offer you tremendous opportunities in the future. And uh, let's hope um, that next year uh, in Geneva, um, I can uh, take some time to uh, acknowledge all of you personally and, and shake your hands. Uh, you deserve it. You're helping yourselves and you're helping the profession. Uh, and in that regard, helping FIDIC, your member associations and your firms. Uh, so best wishes. Uh, you've done a, a, a great bit of work and uh, it's nice to, uh, to see that rewarded and recognized uh, by our global organization called FIDIC. So thank you very much. And back to you, Nelson. Thank you very much, Bill. Next slide. <clears throat> Next one, please. Just to put the whole lot into context, I'm glad that you know most uh, delegates and candidates would love to see the photograph. Um, my comment closing round, really, I want to thank Ben Novak and Robin. Uh, I think the phrase I'm going to use for attacking me in, in Berlin in 2018, when I just recently came into the office, I think the word to use is attack, really. But it was a positive attack because you challenged me that we've been talking about making a change to the program and it's about time we make a change to that program. One part of me said, I do not need this problem. I've just started the job. But the other part, you keep going, you keep going, you keep going, and you chuck me, you chuck me. Eventually, we got to that point where we revamped it. We toy around, should we do it now or do it later? But I'm glad that you pushed me. And I'm glad to say in the first year of the new revamped program, with the eminent support of our styling lady called Sylvia Fosse. And your support, we managed to make something that was very typical a reality. So I'm so pleased that we did that. And I'm so pleased of the outcome. So we have 63 graduates, 63 new more alumni. I'm told the, the future leaders, you know, graduate or alumni are now over 2,000, if I get the figure right, which is quite big. And gradually, we need to start to think about how do we make this and move it to the next level. So my first test is just to let you know, we are developing what we now call the FIDIC credentialing program. And some of your candidates who are the you know, lecturers or professors, whatever title we decide to call you, have been invited to help us with that. What we want to do, as you know, clearly said by uh, Michael earlier on, this is a program like a mini MBA or you can call it master program, but we want to move that to the next level. A lot of people who's been on this program, they're now coming to a point where they have their own business or they're running a big business. And I keep name checking, Michelle is one of them. And you also have, you know, Richard who's a part of a big organization is going to do great things. I'm really delighted to see that happening. What we want to do is how do we make the connection between the future leader management certificate and the FIDIC certifying consulting Team. This is the real question. I would like to see this as a natural progression to that. And over the next 12 months, we'll be looking at how we move that forward. But without further ado, I just want to say thank you to all the professors or lecturers who are involved with this delivery. I want to congratulate all of you who have been involved in this year, even though you cannot come to Geneva, but I look forward to seeing you all in Geneva next year. And for those who are contemplating should I come into this program? Is there any benefit? As Michelle said, yes, there is benefit. One, you meet a new group of people. Two, you share knowledge. Three, you are taking best practice, built up over 100 years of experience, built up in the fiddly body of knowledge, translating that into a piece of work that you can glean over six months. And you come out of it, building relationship, new friendship, and you go on to become leaders of the world. So I congratulate you all. And I hope this mini celebration will go down very well. And for the fact that we are unable to meet, don't see that as a handicap, see it as an opportunity for you to join us in next year in Geneva. So on that note, Ben and the rest of the team and everybody else, thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you for your support. And for those who are unable to join us here, please have a look of the video. The opportunity is there for you to look at it. Take it back and show it to your leaders at work. 
and at least show the example that you'll be recognized at the global level. So play safe and be safe wherever you are. Thank you very much. God bless.